everyone, welcome back to Men Made Easy. Today we are going to go over four causes of post-op hypotension. Now if you are a nursing student or a new nurse or just someone who's trying to just touch base on things, this is a great video for you. So, so let's get right into it. So vital signs are often a good indicator that the patient is declining. Blood pressure in particular can tell us many different things about the patient's status. And before we jump into the causes and interventions for post-op hypotension, Here's a list of some different things that um, can actually indicate that the individual is hypotensive. Dizziness, shortness of breath, nausea, confusion, syncope, slurred, feet, slurred speech, chest pain, blurred vision, tachycardia. Now this is not an all-inclusive list. These are just some of the main things that we will often see. And if the individual is experiencing any one of these things, the individual's vital signs should be taken right away. And always remember that assessment comes first. So you definitely should assess the patient, how they're doing, listen to their lungs, listen to their heart, all of those type of things. Let's go ahead and jump right into our countdown of some of the things that cause post-op hypotension. Number four, sepsis. Hypotension is often a sign of sepsis. Sepsis is basically an over-response of the body to infection, and it can lead to things like organ failure very quickly. Patients can decline rapidly if no interventions are taken. Here are some, but not all, of the interventions that are often taken for sepsis. IV fluid boluses, IV maintenance fluid, antibiotics, strict INOs, vasopressors for hypoperfusion, ICU transfer, vital signs every one hour, vascular checks, neuro checks, lactic acid, and other lab level checks, CVP monitoring. So these are just a few of the interventions that are taken for sepsis. There are many other interventions. Let's move on to the next cause of hypotension post-op. Number three, pain medications. Pain medications are often given after surgeries for obvious reasons. Not only can pain medications be sedating, but they can also affect the vital signs, in particular the blood pressure. This can become a very tough battle to fight when you're trying to treat someone who has severe pain post-op, but then they also have a low blood pressure. So that can be a kind of a, a tricky balance and definitely you should be in contact with the provider when these type of things are happening. Um, pain medication often provides significant relief for the patient. So it's important that that is covered and that we are treating patient for pain, but it still becomes a problem if their, their vital signs are unstable. Morphine is one pain medication that is often used post-op and not only can potentially decrease the blood pressure, but also decrease the heart rate and venous return. Here are some interventions that can be taken if an individual, their blood pressure gets low because of pain medications. Monitoring the patient's vitals, holding other meds that may reduce blood pressure, assessing the need for the pain medication. A lot of times what can happen there is we give pain medication when the patient is really not needing as much as they were given or they could use something else that maybe could kind of help whatever's going on. So sometimes they don't need the IV pain medications. They may actually need an oral medication that would help them a lot more than just doing the IV medication that doesn't last very long. IV fluids, of course, are important. And then also calling the provider to request changes in the pain medication. Um, as I mentioned, there might be something else that they could use that is a little more suitable for what their um, complaint is. Moving on to the next cause of hypotension post-op, bleeding. This is a very important one. It is first important to understand and know some of the signs and symptoms of an individual who may be bleeding. This is a brief list here. There are many other signs, but if you're seeing any of these things, definitely you might consider getting the vital signs right away and also, of course, assessing on a patient right away and also getting a CBC as soon as possible. Bleeding is a potential complication from surgery and should be monitored very closely. And so the surgeon really should be contacted immediately if any bleeding is suspected. It is expected to see some drop in hemoglobin post-op, but typically it's not a significant amount and it usually bounces back fairly quickly. But if it keeps on decreasing, that could be a sign that an individual is bleeding um, or significantly bleeding, I should say. This is why it's so important to monitor the surgical site appearance and also the amount of drainage. It's also important to monitor how the patient feels and appears. And if the patient complains of any kind of um, 
strange, odd feelings, you you should just get their the vital signs and often um, get a chemistry panel, also a stat CBC likely needs to be done. So here's some of the interventions that need to be done if you suspect someone is bleeding or you know that they're bleeding. A stat CBC, IV fluids, type and screen for blood, make sure patient has a patent IV, ICU transfer, serial CBC monitoring, monitor surgical site, and call the surgeon. The final cause of post-op hypotension is adrenal insufficiency. This is often one that gets missed when considering the causes of hypotension, but it is an extremely important one to recognize. If an individual has Addison's disease, th what this means is they don't produce enough cortisol, and usually they need lifelong replacement. Surgeries and other stressors on the body can sometimes throw an individual into an adrenal crisis, and one of the signs of an adrenal crisis is hypotension. Some of the other signs include confusion, weakness, abdominal pain, severe, delirium, hyperkalemia. Before any surgery in an individual who has Addison's disease, these individuals should be evaluated and treated for any hypovolemia, hyperkalemia, and or hyponatremia. Current guidelines also suggest giving a stress dose of a gluco glucocorticoid, specifically IV hydrocortisone. After the surgery, these individuals should be monitored closely for hypovolemia, hyperkalemia, and hyponatremia. Risk for deficit fluid volume is a specific nursing diagnosis for this condition. Because of the potential for lab abnormalities, these individuals should be monitored for cardiac issues. Because these individuals are at risk for hyperkalemia, they may develop chest pain and or palpitations. In addition to getting a BMP, cardiac enzymes, and other labs, an EKG should also be ordered. The result of an EKG are usually immediate. We get those results back, and if you see that there are peaked T waves, this is often a sign of hyperkalemia. These are some of the interventions that should be taken for individuals who have Addison's disease and develop some hypotension post-op. BMP panel, IV fluids, monitor INOs, telemonitoring, EKG, hyperkalemia treatment if the individual has hyperkalemia. Well, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. Make sure to hit the subscribe button. I hope this helped. If you are a new nurse, make sure to also check out some of our other videos. Hopefully that you find them helpful. Also follow our Instagram page at MedMadeEasy. And we are also on Pinterest, so check that out. And we're also on Facebook. We have a MedMadeEasy Facebook page. All right, everyone, until next time, take care.